Hi, I'm Paul Beckwith. I just taught a class of about 10 kids, sort of beginning chess. I teach at the University of Ottawa and at Carleton, climatology and meteorology. And I've taught people all around the world with my YouTube videos. Given many talks at conferences, given many public talks, all about the uh, risks and dangers that we face from abrupt climate change. In this video, I'm going to talk about fairy tales to deny greenhouse gas caused global warming, climate change. So I asked the kids, you know, what's really, what's sort of scary to you? What sort of conspiracy theories are they? they? They didn't know what conspiracy theories were. So I said, what sort of make-believe things are there? What sort of fairy tales are there that, that stories that you've heard that scare people? Um, you know, a lot of it is to control people's behavior. So the kids in my class, 10 of them, like I say, they're, they're seven to nine years old. They came up with things like the Loch Ness Monster or Bigfoot. You know, aliens, ghosts, UFOs, vampires, the gray man. I'd never heard of the gray man. Apparently, if you go on a beach and you see a gray man, it means that the coming uh, hurricane or storm will not destroy your house. If you see the gray man, well, that's a good thing. I, you know, you want to see the gray man. Zombies. Shadows, the boogeyman. And then they talked about things like, they mentioned avalanches and sharks, so things with big teeth. The Grim Reaper. Tomatoes, somebody said, you know, and then, and then realized he meant to say uh, tornadoes. <laughs> Forest fires, the dentist drill, blood, skeletons, war, volcanoes, and werewolves. So all of these things were were mentioned. And you can break these things down to sort of the unknown, you know, shadows, the boogeyman, something going bump in the night, uh, natural disasters, you know, forest fires, tornadoes, earthquakes, things that we don't have much control over, the supernatural, or humans, like the dentist that is bearing that dentist drill. You know, that's pretty scary. You know, the grim reaper, you know, some human like character. Okay, so all of these things were, were mentioned. I said, well, what about crossing the street? Is anybody scared about crossing the street? And somebody said, well, only if I fall down. So I guess there's a point there. But, you know, the risk, of course, of crossing the street is probably the largest risk in any of these kids' lives. You know, this is Canada, so they didn't mention um, terrorism or things like that. Now, so these kids... They have these, but they know that most of these things that they, you know, the Loch Ness Monster, Bigfoot, they, they, they know they can discriminate between what's make-believe and what's real, for the most part, right? Now, I don't think adults do so well, quite frankly, because adults are subject to, to all kinds of propaganda. I mean, the kids are told these fairy tales throughout history to sort of make them good kids, control their behavior, things like that, but they know... They know these things aren't um, real for the most part. It doesn't take them long to figure out, you know, the, the Santa Claus and Tooth Fairy and Easter Bunny type stories. But adults seem to have a lot more trouble because adults, they get fixated on their ideas and these ideas can be total baloney and yet they're so fixated it's very difficult, maybe impossible to get them to change their, their minds. So, so what are some of the adult fairy tales? Uh, to describe or, or to try to explain away climate change as being something other than uh, greenhouse gas cause. So, you know, we can talk about things like harp, okay, chemtrails, crop circles, aliens again, that's common to both groups. Um, you know, not believing in greenhouse gases causing climate change. Um, evolution. Vaccines, they're harming people, they're killing people. 
you know, the deep state, Chinese hoax uh, for climate change, polar shift, magnetospheric uh, shifting, global cooling, sun cooling, cosmic rays, you know, we're geoengineering with chemtrails. All of these things are, and often people have a package, okay? If somebody tells me, for example, that, oh yeah, they're spraying chemtrails, there's chemtrails, they're poisoning people, people are being poisoned with these things, and there's very slick campaigns and very good videos professionally done by the top propaganda people to say, you know, we're doing this and it's harming people and, you know, it's changing the climate and all this, you know, the slickest possible presentations. But, you know, if, if somebody believes in chemtrails, I can say the probability of them not thinking greenhouse gases are change, causing climate change. They think that HARP is causing extreme weather events. They don't believe in evolution. They think vaccines are an evil thing to poison people and control people. They think the deep state is behind all this. They think the poles are shifting and all. You know, you, there's a package deal of, of, you know, it's like the brain is wired to, to believe all of these things. And we know that one entire political party in the U.S. has these false beliefs. And we know that vast numbers of people believe these things. And it's, it's gotten out of hand because of social media, quite frankly. What do all these things have in common, first of all? Well, what they have in common, they, there's a belief in some evil out there, some massive conspiracy theory planned in, in, in secret by people, um, ignored by science, or scientists are involved in, in perpetuating it, um, amplified in echo chambers. Um, basically, the common thing is that they deny greenhouse gases, causing warming of the planet. More greenhouse gases, solar radiation comes in, heats the earth, that heat rises, it's trapped by more greenhouse gases, warms the planet, we get loss of sea of snow cover and ice at the in the Arctic, so the Arctic warms like crazy, disrupts the jet streams, causes these extreme weather events. This this is a very clear scientific link between all these things, but people prefer prefer to think that somebody, some evil person is sitting in a room dialing up storms off the east coast of the US, weather bombs, or or dialing up hurricanes and, and things. Um, you know, this, this evil geoengineering idea. And you know what? Quite frankly, belief in the tooth fairy is, is uh, you know, the same sort of thing, really. Like, like it's just, it's, it's absurd to me what, how gullible people can be. You know, I'm talking about otherwise highly intelligent people. They fall hook, line, and sinker for all of these non-scientific theories. So this is a very, this is a danger to us. This is why we can't deal with our problems right now. This is why we can't deal as a society with climate change. It's why our biosphere is being destroyed. So let me elaborate on that um, a little bit. Okay, so all of these things um, they, that deny greenhouse gas caused warming. Well, who wants to deny greenhouse gas warming? We know, we know exactly who wants to do that. Greenhouse, who wants to say greenhouse gas emissions are not the root cause of our problems? It's the richest corporations on the planet. It's fossil fuel companies. It's oil companies and gas companies. For years and years, the top PR people said tobacco is good for you. Nine out of ten doctors smoke camels or whatever. It's good for you. They failed. They lost that battle. They moved to climate change. Now it's that climate change isn't happening, global warming is not happening, and then, okay, global warming is happening, but it's not caused by humans, and then, okay, well, global warming is happening, still not caused by humans, but there's nothing we can do about it, and then all the extreme weather events come into your face, you know, and they need to be, scientists around the world need to step up. We're losing this battle. We're losing this battle to ignorance and stupidity. Before, you could just ignore these people they were fringe groups, they never got big, they went away. In our world of social media, these groups have exploded. My videos, look at the people that watch them normally, 
you know, I get four or 5,000 views maybe. I've had a couple videos break through into the 20s of thousands. I had one break through into 450,000. Do a video about some imaginary island in the middle of the Pacific appearing and you can get half a million views. Now, are those views legitimate? Are people just paying for getting huge viewerships? Do a video about chemtrails or harp or something like that. Millions of views, slick videos, huge funding, all total bullshit and crap, okay? So how are we gonna solve problems of our society when we're up against this? Where's the code of conduct of people? Um, doctors have the Hippocratic Oath to do no harm, okay? Engineers have the ritual of the calling of an engineer. Rudyard Kipling, Iron Ring. You know, how to be an engineer, okay? The duties and responsibilities um, to the public. You know, build a bridge that's super strong. Build a road that's gonna last. Build structures and buildings that aren't gonna harm people. Um, there's codes of conduct in other areas. Some people um, have tried to bring a code of conduct to scientists. For example, Sir David King, the advisor to the UK science um, government, the science advisor to the UK government, had this code of ethics for scientists, okay? And you can look it up and read it. Um, you know, the moral responsibility of professionals to society. But the problem is, is that the public um, doesn't recognize experts, okay? I'm an expert, I'm, I'm a master at chess, okay? I reached over 2,300 rating points, that doesn't mean anything to you, but I'm an expert. I spent hours at chess. I could play just about any of you and totally destroy you and crush you, rip you up to pieces, pull you apart, you wouldn't have a chance, okay? Um, and, you know, we could play hundreds of games and, and uh, I, you know, I could just play with you. I could give away pieces and, and, and beat you. I could sacrifice my queen. You know, I could, I could start without a queen for many people if you're just a beginner and totally destroy you. Okay, you'd recognize that I'm an expert at chess and know what I'm talking about. Well, as far as climate change goes, I would say that I'm much stronger, my rating, climate change rating, my knowledge, overall general knowledge on climate, overall knowledge on systems, on drawing the dots, putting pieces together, is even higher um, than in chess. Um, and it takes a lot of work, but I go talk to people on the street about climate change and they think they know more than I do. Oh, well, it's chemtrails, or, or it's uh, harp is the, the weather, or it's this or that, it's all, you know, so, like, <laughs> right? It's crazy. I mean, we still do recognize some groups, like we recognize the dentists, okay? You want a good dentist, otherwise you're, you're going to pull out the wrong teeth and you're going to be in a lot of pain. You know, you don't want a guy who's going to tie a string to your tooth and to the doorknob, for example. Um, you know, we want to trust our science experts. Um, we want to trust our engineers, you know, they have to be certified to build roads and elevators and structures to, uh, you know, pour concrete, build pylons, uh, you know, build society. They have to know what they're doing. They get licenses and they get regulation and they have, uh, you know, codes of ethics and stuff. But scientists talking about climate change and how the risks are enormous and we're losing the biosphere, well, you know, no, we don't, you know, we have our opinion. Everything's just fine. It's a Chinese hoax. Okay, so we're going down. Like, like there's no, I mean, this is destroying our society. You know, the, the, the lack of, you know, more and more scientific papers come out, more and more stuff is coming out about how terrible climate change is, abrupt climate change, how quickly our planet and biosphere are changing, how the threats to food supply will be enormous, and the experts in climate change are saying this is a huge problem. I put out hundreds of videos trying to educate the public. And what happens? Well, people will watch the, the chemtrail videos or they'll watch the total nonsense videos. So if you have any suggestions to how to uh, save, how to, how, how, to, how to basically knock people's sense into people's heads, I'm all, I'm all ears. Um, scientists have failed miserably in nixing these, these vast, these ridiculous fairy tale um, theories about, about uh, what's happening to our, our, our 